Hello everyone, if you're experiencing some deja vu and thinking you've seen this before, that's because you have. This is a re-upload of a previous video that had some issues. This is just a video announcing that I'm releasing Frightfully Forgotten the Music Volume 2 on digital download, on CD, and also on cassette tape. The link will be in the description for this video. It'll take you to Bandcamp. Where you can also, if you don't want a physical copy, you can get the digital download, which of course will be cheaper and no shipping involved. So this is the music composed for this YouTube channel between seasons 3 and 6. There will be 13 tracks available for digital download. The CD will have an extra 4 and the cassette will actually have an extra 1 song because there's only so much space on the cassette and the CD too actually, but I was able to squeeze 17 tracks onto the CD. Some songs included are the Frightfully Forgotten 8-bit version and the Trash or Treasure theme song, which a lot of people seem to like. And this is a full song. It's got vocals, you know, a verse, chorus, and an awesome guitar solo done by a very good friend of this channel, Mark Miller, aka Corrupter. He's a great musician. I'm going to put a link to his channel as well in the description to go check out some awesome progressive instrumental metal. And if you like, there are still some physical copies of Volume 1 available on CD and of course on digital download as well. Now that we have that out of the way, I also want to take the time to give you guys a tour of my home studio to see where all the magic happens. So keep watching if you want a studio tour. So here is the studio tour. Welcome to my new studio for you gearheads and people who are into music production and synthesizers and drum machines and all that kind of fun shit. So I'm um, a little panoramic shot here before I get into details of what everything is here in the studio. Uh, starting here with my guitars. I'm not a guitar player. I'm a hack at best. So I don't need anything fancy. This is my Fender Squire Telecaster, which for a Squires is pretty damn good. There's a saying that not all squires are built equal, and this one is uh, one of the better squires that I've played. And I remember everyone in the store is like, Yeah, that, that's a killer squire. Over here is uh, my PV bass, which again, PV sometimes is considered a bit of a joke when it comes to especially basses and guitars, but I gigged with this thing for years and this neck has never been adjusted. That neck is solid, it never moves, it rarely ever needs a setup or intonation done on it, so it's a great bass and I got a killer deal on it and it looks pretty badass too. Over here is uh, another bass, this is the Epiphone hollow body Jack Cassidy bass and there's a bit of a story behind this guy actually. My good friend Ian found this in the garbage in Richmond, BC. It was stripped of all the hardware and electronics and he always knew that I wanted a hollow body bass so he shipped it to me here in Winnipeg and we put it together. Me and the guitar tech that works at the store that I run put it together so this basically cost me parts and that was it and it's basically the bass I record with now. Um, doesn't play great, it's a bit of a beast to play, but it sounds good, really good recorded. So over here is kind of drum machine and sequencer land. So starting over here on the right is your Beat Beatstep Pro. And if anyone has watched my synth jams that I do, this thing basically sequences anything I'm not playing with my hands. So it has two sequencers on it plus a third sequencer specifically to be run to um, a drum machine. So the drums, when I do the synth jam, comes from the this guy here, which is just a sampler. There's a Tonabray intro. Uh, so anything that's drums is triggered to this guy. And I have an Akai Rhythm Wolf here, which is another analog drum machine and very lo-fi sounding. I don't use it much, but if you need like a lo-fi vintage type drum machine, that's kind of a go-to for me for that kind of stuff. Uh, next to it is the newest addition to the studio, the Archeria Mini Freak. Um, haven't, much, haven't had much time to really use it, 
but I do plan on using it a lot in the future, especially for anything that really needs to sound kind of modern and futuristic, uh, as opposed to the usual retro stuff I do. Um, so that's where this guy will fit in. Down here is kind of uh, drum machine land. So I got the Volca series here by Korg, all very small but very powerful drum machines. Like the Volca Beats here is an analog drum machine and that kick drum sounds so huge, you may not be able to tell here, but um, it's worth the price of admission for that kick drum sound alone. Up over here is the Volca drum, and um, again, a super underrated little drum machine. Uh, this thing could do wonders for really weird, wacky, cool sounding electronic drums. I've used it quite a bit. And over here, the Volca sample, which is a sample based drum machine. Um, the only thing is, it's a pain in the ass to load samples in. It doesn't use like an SD card or anything. You have to do it with like the mini jack, and it's a pain in the ass, but. The built-in sounds aren't bad. Um, over here is the Waldorf Blofeld, which I don't use tons, but when I do my synth jams, this thing is being triggered by the beat step for a lot of the sequences because this guy can actually do like eight parts or more. Maybe I think it's even 16 parts at once. So if you wanted to, you can trigger 16 different sequences from uh, another source into this guy. Over here is my rack. Um, nothing too fancy. I'm not really into super expensive or vintage gear. If it gets the job done, it gets the job done, really. So basically just a bunch of mic preamps. Um, that's mostly what's in here. Little compressor there, headphone amplifier, if you ever need to record a band, which is basically never, but I've done it the odd time. Um, down here is my pedal board from back when I used to gig. I busted it out. It's been in hibernation for about seven years. Uh, so those are all bass effects. Down here, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a uh, another rack mount synthesizer, a Yamaha TX81Z, which is a FM synth. So for any retro type stuff, um, that comes in really handy. Over here to studio monitor land, I got NS10s and Care K VXT4s. Now the NS10s you might recognize, they are kind of the staple studio monitor used for decades and decades and they're you're basically the studio monitor and there's actually a story behind how I got these. I was doing a, a PA install at a place and they were using these NS10s as PA speakers which is fucking ludicrous. So I asked the guys, you mind if I take these home? Because they weren't using them. So I got a free pair of NS10s. That being said, uh, I had to replace a tweeter and a woofer on, on each one of these. So they weren't free free, but still not nearly as expensive as uh, uh, having to buy them. So over here to computer land, this is the laptop I used to edit the Frightfully Forgotten episodes. Uh, it's like a gaming laptop, so it's not bad for video. Um, I don't really use that for music production so much. I've been using the same PC for fucking ages. I'm just waiting for it to die on me. Over here is more synthesizers. So uh, the Juno 106 is a classic, classic 80s synth. Very sought after these days. And if you want that 80s sound, you know. Juno 106. I use this pretty much on tons and tons of the music made for the uh, the channel because it just has that horror movie retro sound. Down over here is another oldie, um, a Kurzweil K2000S. This goes back to like the early 90s. And it takes floppy disks. Look at that. I used to gig with this thing for years and people would laugh at me when I'd show up with a floppy disk and load it into the fucking keyboard. But this thing is super powerful. And uh, I wouldn't gig with it today because it's kind of been through hell and back and the chassis is basically being held together by like one or two screws. So uh, I don't move this thing unless I really have to these days. Over here is the Novation KS4. Again, I used to gig with this thing all the time. Um, pretty badass synth. It's a virtual analog synth, but you can do four parts on it. So it's good for gigging because you could split it or layer it uh, four different places if you need to. 
Over here is the uh, Novation Base Station, which is a fantastic monophonic analog synthesizer. Again, I use this on almost every song that I made since I got this thing. Um, it's just got such a huge, beefy analog sound. Um, I love it, and it's great for building sequences because the onboard sequencer is, is really damn good. Um, and that's kind of about it. You know, over here on the floor, I got a Tascam 4-track tape recorder that I'll probably use to make the uh, tapes when I release the Frightfully Forgotten Volume 2 on cassette. And that's pretty much the studio in a nutshell. If you got any questions about any gear here, uh, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments because I am a bit of a gearhead. If you're still tuned in, thank you very much for sticking around for the studio tour. Like I said, if you have any questions about the gear and stuff and how it works, let me know in the comments because I love this kind of stuff. Um, and just a reminder to keep your eyes peeled in the next couple of weeks. We will be making another physical media release announcement. So, keep your eyes peeled and stay tuned. And until then, feel free to go down to Bandcamp and pick up the album, either digital download or physical copy, if you like.